Buenos dias. Good morning. Ah! Oh, that actually felt really good. Good morning. It is Monday morning and it's been a long time. I know. I know. You can yell at me. You can be like, Greta, what the heck? I have imposter syndrome. Basically, TLDR, I have imposter syndrome and I just couldn't get myself to make videos because I just felt like they weren't going to be good enough. I felt like they were going to suck. And then this weekend I was like, Greta, enough is enough. You need to just shut up in your mind and just do it. So this is me doing it. It's been a long time since I filmed a day in my life as a UX slash product designer and I thought, you know what, today's a great day to do it because I have a lot of random things going on. So welcome. Welcome to New York City. As you can tell, I'm a product designer. I work in the e-commerce space, so I'm customer facing. Right now, it's obviously still morning, so I am eating breakfast. I'm not gonna lie, this is a very accurate representation of my mornings. Eating breakfast with my computer, with my planner, which isn't ideal. There goes the plane. I would really love to get to the point which, don't get me wrong, some of my mornings are like that where I'm able to wake up extra early and eat breakfast and enjoy my coffee and look out the window with some beautiful jazz music playing in the background. I do strive to have all of my mornings look like that. If you're curious as to what I'm eating, I've been really into overnight oats. I've been into them for a while, but they're just so easy. You make it the night before and your breakfast is sorted for the next morning, which I I love it just saves me so much time you just take it out of the fridge you put all your toppings that you want on it and you're good to go and right now I'm just kind of going through my slack messages because sometimes I miss them at the very end of the day on Friday eating some breakfast checking the slack messages checking the email just making sure that I respond to anything as early as I can. I do have morning stand-up with my team in like 15 minutes. And if you don't know what stand-up is, a stand-up is a morning meeting. It usually happens at the very beginning of the day before you have any other meetings. Usually it's a meeting with your actual like internal team. So that'll include your product manager, it'll include your software developers, and it'll include all of the UX designers on the team. So you basically talk about what you did yesterday and what you're gonna do today. And also you mentioned if you have any blockers so anything that's keeping you from accomplishing what you need to accomplish like let's say you're waiting on someone to respond to one of your questions or you need help with cer a certain task or something I have that in like 15 minutes it's usually a very quick call it's like maybe 15 minutes in total and right now I'm just gonna enjoy this breakfast so tired like I'm trying to like and I think I know why I went out on Saturday night I went dancing I feel like as I get older my body just needs more time to recover from things like that because that was Saturday night and then Sunday I slept I think like six hours and then I went to a workout class which was really ambitious of me and even though I did go to sleep early yesterday I think my body just needs one more night to just recalibrate because I'm like so tired. Anyways, I had my stand-up meeting. It went really well. It went through my Slack messages, my emails, and now it is cafecito o'clock. Fun fact, I never have my coffee like right when I wake up. I don't know how people do that. You know, people who wake up, the first thing they drink or eat is coffee. I can't do that. I feel like it, it hits the wrong way. And now I have to hold the lid or else it's gonna fly off. I really need you right now. Okay, I'm at my desk now. By no means do I put on makeup most days when I work from home because I'm like, 
But I do find, I'm sure this is scientifically proven, I do find that when I do put on a little bit of something on my face to like cover my under eyes or put something on my cheeks, I feel more productive and I feel better. I feel better about myself. And also when I do have to show my face for any type of meeting, I like to put a little bit of something on my face. I don't do a full beat. I don't do foundation. So I'm going to put on a little bit of something because I do have a meeting in a little bit where I have to show my face. I have a meeting with one of my UX researchers and we're just basically going to go over the question questions that I have written for the user test to basically test the usability of one of my designs. I'm going to meet with this UX researcher. He's going to go through my questions with me. I have questions for him because I am going to be on camera. I want to do a little bit of something. I'm going to use my Kosa's concealer. Concealer is numero uno. So I'm going to let that sit for a second. I literally do two tiny dots. The other thing I'm going to do are my brows. I am trying to grow my brows out because I was traumatized actually. Very recently I went to the brow threading salon and this very kind lady, bless her soul, I'm sure she was like had great intentions the best intentions she uh yeah she basically uh, removed all of my eyebrows in my eyes i'm sure it wasn't that crazy but you know i feel like you're more sensitive to what your face looks like because you look at yourself all the time but uh yeah she showed me it after she was done and she was like is this what you wanted is that what you like and obviously at this point there's nothing they can do they can't put the brows back on your brows i was like Ugh. i was like oh my god they look so good because i don't want her to feel bad so <laughs> thankfully my brows do grow back very quickly but i was i was devastated Okay, now for the fun part, Merit Beauty has come out with these stunning new shades of their Flush Balm. I absolutely love their original Flush Balms. I use this one, which is in the shade Terracotta, literally almost every single day. The shade range is amazing. They have everything from these really bright pinks, and this one is in the shade Stockholm. A little bit darker, more moodier, like this one, which is in the shade Persimmon, and they're just oh they're stunning i absolutely love them they're amazing if you purchase any anything basically anything over 40 dollars you'll get free shipping which is amazing we love and what's also really really exciting is that your very first purchase of merit products you will also get merit's signature bag which is a really cute little makeup bag and so you're going to be all set so what i was getting to is that i really want to put on some blush also to kind of just complete like this no makeup makeup look for my webex slash microsoft teams calls that i have today i think I'm going to go for the darker one today. This flesh balm shade is persimmon and it's just the way I love using it is I'll take the Merit Beauty uh, I think this is actually their foundation brush and I will just kind of like tap it on put it on my cheeks like this. I really love this brush because it's really thick and dense and it just gets the product on the brush and I feel like you don't waste a lot of product. Oh my god it's so pretty after that night out on saturday i feel like i am still dead so this has brought me back to life you can also take it and just like swipe it on your cheeks so that also works really well so you just do that and uh, i love it it also gives you a little bit of a glow which i love and if you're interested in purchasing any of these merit beauty products i have a link linked in the description box of this video where you can check out any of the merit beauty products and again if you purchase anything over 40 dollars and you get that free shipping thank you so much merit beauty for working with me on this video that is my work from home makeup no makeup makeup now the second thing that i'm gonna do now is fill out my planner ladies and gentlemen this is the hobonichi techno planner for 2023 girl i love this planner i was looking for a planner that already had obviously like the calendars in the planner for you in different layouts and different views of your year but i also wanted some blank pages for every single day or some blank space 
on the pages for every day where I could kind of create my daily agenda however I want it to look because sometimes I like to organize it different ways. I actually bought the day free planner and essentially what that means is that the days are, the pages are not dated. These are the pages that you essentially use every single day in terms of like to-do lists or you can even use it because it's a completely blank page so you can use it literally however you want. But I like to use it as like an actual agenda or a planner. I like to have fun with the title, you know, I put Monday and I like to use this left hand section for notes so this is while I'll write any notes that I have like during meetings or something and I'd quickly need to jot something down this is how I'm actually organizing my to-do list at the moment and I'm gonna see how it works for me At the very top I have my daily highlight and I actually learned this from another youtuber his name is Ali Abdal I hope I'm saying that correctly the daily highlight is the one thing out of everything that you have to do maybe you have 10 things that you need to do today but let's say you only have time to do one thing what is that one thing that you have to get done today? The next sections I'm playing around with because I also have been having a little bit of trouble getting things done. So I'm trying to figure out a really good system in terms of like writing down my to-do list. I used to do it by area of life. So I would do my work to-dos and then I would do my life to-dos and then I would do my side hustle to-dos. But then what I ended up finding is that I would get really overwhelmed because I had all these different sections of to-dos and I was like, where do I start? I don't really know what's my top priority. I don't really know what's lower in the priority list. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sectioning off my to-do list by time of day up here I have my morning tasks my afternoon tasks and then other tasks here that maybe technically they could get done at any time of the day but within my morning tasks section I'll actually prioritize my to do's so I'll write number one I need to revise the user test questions number two I need to respond to this specific email from this person you know what to do first and once you finish that first thing you know what to do second you know what to do third so basically prioritizing tasks by time of day like general time of day morning or afternoon and then within those time blocks I will say what is top priority what is second priority what is third priority etc I'm gonna fill this out now just so that I know how the rest of my day is going I really love this pencil from Muji it's one of their really thin pencils the daily highlight for today is that I need to finalize the user test questions for the usability test. If you've never written user test questions or usability questions before, they're really hard to write because you need to make sure that you're not leading the participants with your questions. You need to make sure that your questions don't have any bias in them. There's been a lot of back and forth with so many different versions with myself, versions with my UX manager, versions with this UX researcher. There's just so many versions. In terms of my morning tasks, the very first thing I'm going to do is actually that. Another tip that I have for you when you're writing your actual to-dos is try to make your to-dos as specific as possible and don't make them too big and too general. I could even break down the first one even more. I could say instead of go through usability questions for user test, I could say go through screener questions for usability test. And the second one could be like go through the task questions for the usability test. And the third one could be like, go through the closing questions for the usability test, which actually I should probably write it that way because that's a little bit more manageable, I feel like. Okay, so now we have our afternoon tasks. The first thing I wanna do is actually update my work log. A work log is, you can think of it almost as like a work diary in a way. So essentially I write down everything that I got done that week. I'll write down on like a Word document, January 30th to February 3rd. These are the important things that I got done that week. And it's really nice because it just, you know, it's just a nice documentation of everything that you've accomplished, but I didn't do it last week. So I need to do that today. The second thing I need to do. Oh yeah. So basically I'm revising all of these user test questions, all the screener questions, etc., on like a word document, but the actual platform that we're using to actually run the usability test, I need to create a test on that platform. And then I need to actually input the URLs for all of the prototypes, for all of the mocks. I need to make sure that it looks good on the actual platform. That is done. Now I'm going to actually start working on my very first to do, which is go through the actual screener questions 
for the usability test. These screener questions are just the questions that you want to ask the participants just to kind of weed out or filter out, you could say, the participants that you're not actually trying to test this prototype with. So you wanna make sure that the actual people who are testing your prototype are part of the target audience. And then I'm gonna go through the actual task questions. So what I mean by task questions is, with the prototype that I'm testing for the user test, I ask the participants to do certain tasks. So I'll be like, can you navigate to this page from here? Can you navigate to that page from here? It's just a nice way to see if the actual prototype is usable. Like, are they able to navigate to a certain page? If they're not able to complete the task, then that tells you that there's some issue with the usability of your experience. Those are the task questions. I need to make sure they make sense. I need to make sure they're not leading the participants in any, in any way. I need to make sure that they're not biased in any way. And it's really cool to see how participants actually engage with your prototypes, with your designs, because obviously you spend hours like sitting in your room creating these designs and then to put them out in the real world with like real people, it's really cool to see if they understand it. It's really cool to get their feedback and they really open your eyes and you're like, oh my God, I didn't even notice that button wasn't clear. I didn't even notice Notice that that copy didn't make sense. That is what I'm gonna do now. And then I actually do have a meeting. Oh my God, it's in 15 minutes. Okay, <laughs> we'll see what we can get done in 15 minutes, but I do have a meeting in 15 minutes with my product manager. But the product manager is the person that tells you what are the priority projects for this quarter, all of the deadlines that you have. Like for example, we need to get this usability test done within the next two weeks because we need to roll out these designs. They're the ones who kind of keep you on top of timelines, on top of the roadmap. But we're basically just gonna talk about the future, future products that we have going on things in the horizon so I can start thinking about them and that way when I wrap up this usability test and I get all the data and I do my whole readout with the entire team and then the engineers start working on the experience once I hand it over to the engineers and I'm kind of like empty-handed in a way then I can start thinking about these other projects that are coming up in the future and that I need to start thinking about. And then after that, I am meeting with the UX researcher. We're gonna talk about the actual, like I said, the usability test questions and everything. I have a lot of questions for him. Cheers. Hey there, what's up? Long time no see. Meeting with my product manager went really well. We have really exciting things coming up for the future. I do have the meeting with the UX researcher in like five minutes. So the things that I had to do in terms of reviewing the questions, I didn't really get to do that much because I had the meeting with my product manager and it ran a little bit long, which is totally fine. And the whole point of the meeting with the UX researcher is to chat about the questions that I have. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's better to get feedback early on in the earlier stages so that you save more time on your end. It's nice to show your process. It's nice to be transparent and be like, oh my God, listen, I don't know how to solve this problem. I need your help. Okay, so I'm taking a quick break because I thought I would show you my desk and give you a little desk tour to give you an idea of what I work with. The first very obvious thing in the room is this ginormous external monitor. This is from a brand called Innocent. It's ginormous. I think it's over 40 inches and it's a literal TV. Working in tech and being a product designer, or even being a software engineer, we work with so many files and so many versions, especially when we work with design tools like Figma. We sometimes need to blow it up and make it really large and we have so many comps on one page. So this really allows you to see the most amount of things on one screen. I will link all of the products that you see here down below. The second thing is obviously this beautiful desk. This is the branch standing desk. It is a very pricey desk, but it is really, really big. So it's really nice if you have a monitor and you have other things on your desk that you wanna have space for. You can obviously lift it up like this. 
you can lift it as much as you want underneath i actually have my nightstand <laughs> um, that was my nightstand but now i'm kind of just using it as like storage and i can just put a bunch of things in there i put my books on top just a bunch of random things in here and it's really nice to be honest because the big drawback with this desk is that you don't have storage so that's the unfortunate part now the second thing is obviously my mac i was provided this by my company the next thing i have is my mac trackpad i think this is their magic trackpad honestly i love it the reason i bought it is because now that i have my laptop raised it's kind of uncomfortable for me to use my trackpad on my computer on my laptop and I really love it. I actually prefer using a trackpad to a mouse. It's just easier, especially if you're a designer and you use different tools like Figma. I just feel like they're more catered to using a trackpad in my experience. Of course, I have my laptop stand. She's not that pretty. Honestly, they have like nicer acrylic ones that don't stand out as much, but this one works pretty well. Honestly, I don't know what I did before I had a laptop razor. One of the top things I recommend, to be honest, that makes such a big difference and it's not that expensive. This here contraption is actually for my camera. So basically this is working as my uh, camera stand at the moment. This down here is from this really cute store called Muji. I don't know if you, you might have heard of it. It's very popular. It's like a Japanese homeware stationery. They even have clothes there. They have everything, but it's a lot of really good stuff when it comes to organization. So I got this little acrylic organizer. You can use it for whatever you want, honestly. I have another one that I use for my jewelry. My absolute favorite pens are these Pigma Microns. You can get them on Amazon. They'll also be linked to my storefront. Here I just have a bunch of random pens, and then here are my favorite markers the zebra mild liners they're so pretty so amazing so easy to use this vitruvi a diffuser that i absolutely love it's just so good and it's also stunning the last very important part of my desk is obviously my chair my chair is also from branch Honestly, this is the cutest office chair that I have ever seen in my life. The seat cushion is very, very comfortable. It does have lumbar back support. You can see it has like this little bar for your lumbar back or your lower back. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my work from home office situation. So. I had the meeting with the UX researcher. It went really well. I feel like honestly though, I have more questions now. <laughs> I think I'm just thinking too much about it and I'm over analyzing the questions that I'm including in the user test and I just need to wrap it up, finalize it and just be like, okay. I did start putting the questions on the actual platform that we're gonna be using to release the actual test. So that's good to go. Hallelujah. I have no more meetings today, which is very exciting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna update my work log like, like I said I was gonna do I really want to push this off to tomorrow I do this every time I'm like I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow and like I said the work log is just like a diary of everything that you've accomplished that week any meetings that you've had notes for those meetings that you've had I do have random notes from those meetings in my Hobonichi and I need to go back to those pages and see what I wrote down and transfer them to my work log so nice one of my really good friends from college who's now in medical school she gave me a call I just think it's so sweet when people just randomly give you a call just to chat I need to do that more I think I am calling it for the day because my eyes like I said are gonna fall out of my face and I got what I needed to get done done which is good I'm just really happy I pushed through this freaking imposter syndrome that I've been feeling around filming YouTube videos I just I just feel like content in social media is changing so much that it's been really hard to keep up with like trends and not to say that I should be keeping up with trends but it's just overwhelming it's become a very overwhelming space but i think i just need to remember i built a little community for myself i really care about this community i care about my youtube channel i care about my little tiktok and i need to just stop listening to that freaking little voice of imposter syndrome that likes to lie she's lying to you okay your little imposter syndrome voice is lying to you your anxiety lying to you your fear lying to you none of it is true you can do anything that you want to do yes thank you so much 
for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing just one of the days that I have as a product designer. Every day is different. Tomorrow looks very different from today, which is what I really love about this job. I feel like not every single day is exactly the same. So it keeps things a little spicy, a little exciting. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you wanna see more of my face, I do have a TikTok and I do have an Instagram. I will see you in my next video. Bye.